Hello, my name is Mark Taylor and you're very welcome to the show, which is part of the Education on Far podcast network. I just wanted to take this moment to thank our sponsor, the National Association for Primary Education, who speak for young children and all who live and work for them. This can include parents, teachers, governors and all those interested in primary education. NAEP, which is a non-political charity, works tirelessly to support teachers in the classroom and leads the primary umbrella group of 30 primary subjects associations and unions and gives teachers and schools a voice at governmental level at consultation meetings with ministers for schools. If you'd like your voice to be heard and to find out more information, please visit their website at nape.org.uk. That's N-A-P-E dot org dot UK. Hello and welcome to the Education on Far podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Primary Music Special, episode 103. Hello, welcome back to the Education on File podcast with me, Mark Taylor. Today I'm joined again by Ollie Tumner. And Ollie, you'll remember, was back in episode 43 talking about uh, Beat Goes On. And we caught up again very recently at the Music and Drama Education Expo. Um, and he was telling me about some of the great new projects he's been involved in. So he's going to come back on, um, give us a bit of an update of how everything's going there at Beat Goes On and um, and some really great stuff, which I think crosses over very nicely in terms of our English season, as well as the music membership site. So Harley, thanks so much for joining me again today. Hello again, lovely to see you. So why don't we start with the, the Music and Drama Expo. It's a, it was a great experience for me because it's always nice to meet everybody and catch up and everything. But you were yeah. also involved as well as having a stall. You were actually doing some, you were also there d- doing some of the workshops and things as well. Um, yeah, no, we had a great time. Um, it was actually the first time we've had a stall there. And uh, and so we were able to kind of, rather than me walking around and kind of bumping into people and catching up, that way people kind of came to us. Um, and so we, we delivered the opening uh, music session, I think for the first time that year, they had a kind of a separate music and drama. But yeah, we delivered the uh, a, a body percussion and it's kind of body percussion, but we also had an Afro-Brazilian song that uh, one of our facilitators, Lily, taught. And then uh, we had some kind of accompanying body percussion that went with that. Um, and then from our store, we actually did a series of taster kind of workshops. We had a kind of early years kind of focused workshop and um, some of this body percussion with literacy that we'll talk about in a bit. And I'm hoping that we're going to be uh, kind of up, up in Manchester at the Expo later on this year doing the same thing. Um, but it was a yeah, nice way that All the people who kind of participated in the workshop then came and chatted to us about it at our stand. So it was a nice way to kind of actually kind of get those conversations going. Yeah, and and it's a little bit like when you sort of go into schools and do workshops, isn't it? It's the fact that these people have experienced exactly what it's like firsthand. It just opens the door and everyone feels very comfortable. It's not just talking theoretically about what could happen. They've actually experienced it. And that's the best way, really. Absolutely. We, I think we, we found that was very much the case because it was a two day thing. And uh, all the people who'd kind of they, the conversations we had on the first day were very much about the workshop and um, how they could kind of implement uh, what they'd learned into their own teaching. Whereas on our on our second day, it was a little bit more cold calling and kind of explaining what we did, which um, explaining body percussion without doing it is a <laughs> quite an interesting challenge in itself. But yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it was a useful thing to be at. And and what sort of people did you have? Were they mainly primary um, or primary or secondary teachers specifically for music or were they sort of non-specialists or did you sort of get a gauge of the sorts of people that were there? Huge variety. Um, I think the, the the nice thing I guess about the expo is because it's free to attend um, you get all sorts literally and so we had um, yes a variety of primary and secondary classroom teachers and instrumental teachers. Um, we had hub representatives. We had people from abroad um, who are coming um, and I think who have been before because I think it was either the fifth or the sixth year and yeah it's great to kind of hear hear kind of how they've kind of got on with got on with got on with the, the, the couple of days and also how we might be able to work with them in their countries um, and yeah it, it often creates some really nice kind of creative projects um, throughout the UK and internationally. So why don't we just dive into that a little bit in terms of those people listening who who maybe haven't listened to the first podcast or, or not not as au fait with the beat goes on as some others just tell us a little bit about the background and the sorts of things that you sort of provide both in terms of online but also in terms of the actual workshops people can buy in for you 
Sure. Well, um, I mean, our kind of standard uh, line, as it were, is that we provide stump style body percussion and samba drumming workshops and CPD. Um, the stump style element comes from uh, I was in I was a cast member of stump in the London and European tour casts um, a few years back now. But um have combined that with my uh, edu education experience. I was a, a classroom music teacher for a couple of years. And so we kind of combine that to produce um, workshops and CPD, as I said. That, uh, that but, but the nice thing about uh, percussion and particularly body percussion is that it's applicable. Uh, anybody can do it. You don't have to be a music specialist. And so when we do workshops, we're aware that we're working with, um, often when we're working with adults, we have a variety of different experience levels and confidence levels. Um, and so we need to kind of adjust how we teach and what what, what content we cover appropriately and as we've grown as a company so is our team so we're um we are now team beat goes on and uh, we have an early years specialist we have an SEND specialist uh we have people kind of located around the country um and indeed uh, kind of the occasional facilitator kind of internationally as well these are all people who are kind of um brilliant in their own right and i basically just kind of chat to them about a little bit about the beat goes on way of doing things and then ask them to put a beat goes on t-shirt on and then off they go so it's not so much a question of training people from scratch on the workshop side of things, yeah, we kind of work with all, literally all ages um, and do kind of a, kind of a combination of one off school workshops through to kind of 10 week and longer term workshops and um, kind of culminating in uh, often, uh, often in performances. And that also uses we kind of explore creative options. So it's rather than just us teaching pupils uh, Afro-Brazilian or other rhythms, they, we kind of explore some compositional devices as well. So, yeah. As, as I mentioned, the international side of things. Um, last year we had it was a I had a quite a bizarre three weeks. I had um, a week in South Korea at a British international school there for their for an arts week, and then um, I came back to launch um, Sambaroki, which is a new. It's kind of not really part of Beat Goes On, but it's a mass karaoke sing along with a live samba band. So you get your favourite eighties power ballads and then put a samba <laughs> band along to it. So uh, came back for the launch of that, and then literally the day after, headed out for um, a musical futures conference in Melbourne. Um, they call it the Big Gig, and I did uh, the kind of opening session for that and some samba amber drumming workshop so uh it was and that was all within three weeks so it was uh it was a slightly surreal time and i didn't know kind of where or when i was but it's nice that you know obviously we're kind of getting that international work yeah so uh We've, as I said, we've been developing as a, as a, as a team. Um, the, the work's been kind of spreading left, right and centre. Also, recently, we've um, been kind of collaborating quite a lot. We kind of we like working with like minded individuals and have um, kind of just finishing off a, a Samba project with Charanga that um, lots of your listeners may well have heard of and indeed use. Um, and obviously Talk for Writing, who I think we'll, we'll probably discuss a little bit in, in detail. And also uh, some I just had a chat with today with guys from Sing Up. Um, who we're going to be developing some ideas with. So there's lots of ongoing kind of collaborative ideas as well as developing the beat goes on stuff as well. That's great. And um, and can you give us any insights into the sort of the Trenga stuff, which I know, I know you've been sort of doing for a little while now in terms of, is that sort of a standard loan as in people that are already using their platform can just literally take on board the Samba stuff and do it themselves or or how does it work? Basically, it will be a way of uh, them. It'll be an online resource, as all Duranga stuff is. And our, our thing is essentially a 10 week long workshop. I think this case might be seven or eight week long work, workshop course uh, that is done online. And um, I guess the thing with the nice thing about Duranga is that it can be um, kind of delivered, for want of a better word, by non music specialists. They can press a button and off you go. So, um, we we recorded a whole series of videos uh, in Brighton, um, and have kind of combined them with uh, rhythm grids, and also um, we got some authentic videos recorded in Rio de Janeiro. So some kind of trying to give it that authentic sense and kind of getting musicians from the Rio Carnival kind of giving instrument demonstrations. And so during the course of the of the of the project, we. Um, we kind of mostly focus on Samba Batucada, which is the kind of Rio style carnival Samba, but also kind of um, there's elements of Afoche and Maraca too, and other other Brazilian styles. Um, and so by the end of it, we also kind of explore, as I said before, kind of compositional roots. So it's very much there's kind of creative elements in there as well as learning the kind of authentic rhythms on the authentic instruments. It sounds great. I mean, it's, it's that gives you that whole breadth, doesn't it? And, and I love Absolutely. the fact that I've just been able to sort of you know see 
people doing it authentically and actually just sort of get, getting the flavour of it, which is often often the hard thing I've found from having done sample workshops myself. You know, you sort of, it still feels very English or British sometimes when yes. you when you go in and do it because often you're going into school so you might even not you might be wearing something smart or something even if it's relatively yes. samba casual or like you say with a t-shirt it's still a teacher delivering something in that sort of more formal setup so I think to in in order to sort of get that really full sort of samba sense I think that's a great idea. Yeah, we're trying to kind of get away from the kind of the gringo factor, essentially. Mm. Um, and yeah, so getting these kind of authentic uh, or instrument demonstrations is kind of quite a key part of it and something that uh, I kind of haven't seen as much of kind of elsewhere. So we're looking forward to seeing uh, I don't the end product is kind of I think it's due for at least possibly the end of this year. But um, I think as with all of our things, if you follow us on social media with Beat Goes On UK, we can kind of keep you up to date on all our, all our goings on. Yeah, it's great. Exciting. I'd be really interested to, to, to explore that once it goes live, which would be fantastic. So the collaboration thing, as you said, is very important. And um, so we chatted a little bit while we were in London in terms of working in terms of English and sort of that mix between music and English and, and, and how you sort of combine projects with that. And I think the important thing always to remember is the fact that you know they're all part of the one. They're all creative. It's just using what we have available to us in terms of giving children the freedom to kind of explore stuff and, and, and create things which are inspiring for them. And it's just given them that structure, isn't it? So tell us a little bit about how that's been working. Yeah, so um, I think, as I mentioned before, we've been uh, working with uh, Pi Corbett, who uh, many of many of your listeners may well know, and his organisation, Talk for Writing. Um, we originally met at a conference a few years back, and um, I, I hadn't heard of him, I think, in primary circles. He's a bit of a living legend, but uh, um, he, he seemed to like what, uh, at the mo- at that point, I was doing. Um, and we, we he kind of got me into to his conferences, uh, one or two of his conferences, and some we actually delivered some workshops together. So... Um, he created some stories and some poetry with some children and then I took some of the kind of lines of those and then kind of suggested a very kind of a few different options of ways that you could say those lines out loud as a rhythm um, and then how we kind of use that that rhythm then to create a body percussion rhythm from that and then we've since then kind of developed that into our own standalone workshop that uh, we kind of do because obviously Pi and his team are very very busy elsewhere um, to, to, to create our body percussion with literacy uh, workshop which um, um, either uses children's own written work or uh, lines from books they're reading. And then, um, as I said, yeah, we explore kind of some of the options if what, how those lines can be spoken out loud. Um, and they're kind of exploring kind of the pulse and the syllabic options. So, for example, the word percussion, it's, it's percussion. The, that, that middle syllable is emphasised rather than percussion or percussion. And we're kind of exploring that and really kind of getting in depth with the rhythm of words and, and how those kind of um, syllabic elements uh, work. Uh, and then once kids are kind of happy with how they want to say a, kind of a, a given sentence out loud, they then adapt that onto their bodies so it's kind of creative literacy and music uh simultaneously um and it's really lovely whenever we do these workshops it's very much um we're almost kind of using the children as a vehicle for teachers cpd um we obviously want the, the children themselves to have a fantastic experience but it needs also kind of really predominantly it's something that the teachers feel they can take away and implement straight away um we did a session uh, a few weeks back and uh, it was over the course of a week and uh, one of the teachers had gone back and he tried to do this with a scientific principle and basically the whole kit, the, the whole class had kind of uh, created a body percussion rhythm that was the rhythm of this scientific principle and every single one of them could kind of tell him if they asked them, I think he asked them a couple of days later what that scientific principle was and they were able to remember it because they did it through the body percussion. So it was a kind of a, an aid memoir as well as being something fun. I love it, and and I think it is that because it's so interactive, and and the fact that it's memorable, isn't it? That's often the thing. Yes, you know, you, absolutely. There, you've got sort of the 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 mental imagery, you've got the physical memory of actually creating it, and 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 the combining the two together, and that's you know, it's a, a proven method, isn't it, in terms of actually making it sort of memory work in that way, and, and it bringing it to life. Yeah, and uh, and then upcoming, we've got um, a project that we're going to be delivering um, across Brighton schools, which. Um, 
again in collaboration with Pi um, and some of his team. Um, and this is with um, the Brighton and Hove Music and Arts, um, or uh, and who are part of I think Brighton Dome and Festival. They're the the kind of various labels that they kind of go under varies from time to time. Yes. But uh, yeah, the guys who are responsible for that element of the music making in Brighton. And uh, so that's going to be a nice kind of project that we're starting off um, uh, in this term. We, there's going to be a kind of a CPD day, um, and then there's going to be a kind of half, a two half days per school over the course of the next couple of terms um, where we implement kind of and, and support teachers in implementing this kind of combined music and literacy approach and I, I think lots of these schools are already taught for writing schools um, but they're quite excited about how the kind of the, the, the percussive elements can be added to this because obviously as I said like before the the body percussion side of things it's something that can be done anywhere by anyone at any time so it's um, the accessibility of it is quite a key factor and we're kind of looking forward to seeing how that project develops. And I can really imagine that with I mean, literacy and, and obviously maths and, and the sciences, that they're so high on everyone's agenda now. But I think you know, we talk about getting music in the arts um, as a bigger part of the school. But I think what this shows us is the fact that no matter what the sort of the overall focus needs to be and, and what teachers and schools need to focus on, there, there are ways to bring it all together under, under sort of one roof, as it were. And, and that being creative like that just means that everyone gets what they want which is more creativity and a breadth in the in the curriculum but it's still been able to use it in a way that ticks all the boxes that schools still need to tick and I think that's really clever within this project I think there's a lot of um, very excited heads who are, who are kind of looking forward to kind of as you said kind of ticking those boxes but in a fun and creative way um, which doesn't always happen unfortunately um, and I think sometimes it's a bit of a you know it's a bit of a risk to take because um, because it's a kind of a creative process it's a bit messy it's not always predictable um, there's kind of outcomes we're aiming for which may vary during the course of the of the process so um, yeah it's it's not it, although the box sticky bits there the, the kind of the risk and the messiness of the of a creative process is also involved so uh, we may well end up with uh, kind of outcomes that we hadn't kind of foreseen which will be uh, you know fun to see and, and also doing it over such a number of schools as well it'll be really interesting to see how how the results work it's, it's one of the things I've always been interested in you sort of do the same thing in this but in a different place and and each day is very different and and that's interesting in terms of our creativity isn't it it's sort of instructors and facilitators because then you really do have to be adaptable and actually just work with who you've got with you and, and create that atmosphere in order to get like I say whatever the outcome you're aiming for but like I say it can be messy and it can go in all sorts of directions yeah and also very very pupil led um which is lovely it's you know you kind of it, it it's uh you know, each, literally each session can go in a kind of a variety of different things, and you, it's a question of then how you kind of uh, cope. With it. Like, okay, right, you come up with that. Okay, no, let's let's try and use that. Um, but then also sometimes the the challenge for the kind of I guess experienced music facilitator is then following wherever that goes, but still keeping it in a way that perhaps the kind of the less experienced teacher can kind of take something away from, rather than it just being some kind of Frank Zappa esque wig out. So yeah, we have to kind of take all those things into account. And so what other projects are you, are you involved in? What what new things are you doing apart from this particular literacy one? Yeah, so that, well, there's a few uh, nice things coming. As I said, we spoke, we had a chat with Sing Up today, um, and so that they're, they're kind of quite interested in kind of developing that within their kind of uh, CPD events and conference uh, input. Um, also, very excitingly for well, I, I guess for me personally, but also for kind of Beat Goes On is that we're about we, we've just kind of so they signed an agreement with Hal Leonard to do a body percussion resource, um, and this will be basically a kind of a, a culmination of all the workshop material. Well most of it, most of the workshops that we've been using, uh, certainly a good proportion of it, and it will be a combination of online videos and rhythm grids, and we'll kind of show how we go about, uh, some of the ways that we go about doing kind of body percussion workshops, um, and also some of the creative approaches we use, and very much something that, you know, teachers uh, of, of, of all ages, and of, perhaps not necessarily uh, kind of classroom music teachers, but um, independent musicians, or kind of uh, leaders of community groups can apply, um, and I'm aware that there are some existing body percussion resources, but this be very much kind of beat goes on's uh, kind of take on it. And uh, we've kind of, I, I've pretty much kind of written it now. It's just kind of a question of doing the filming. So um, watch this space for the release date. No, that sounds fantastic. And and I think actually what, what seems to come across as we've been chatting is, is that sort of overarching kind of idea that 
in in this day and age you need so many versions of things to 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 give the support you need to each person like say if there's a music um specialist there then they can take things very directly from a a, a visual resource or, or printed music or however that happens to be and then a non-specialist needs a little bit more and so some of the projects you're doing within schools so like you say they're getting the cpd as part of what's actually going on is just really giving them the skills they need for the future which is great and then like i say then just that collaboration with lots of organizations means that you get the opportunity to reach more people and support more people in different ways like say whether that's within schools or community as well so it seems like you're on a real role in terms of of that sort of uh, as i said overarching kind of idea of just getting this sort of rhythm aspect out into the world yeah absolutely and obviously as i said before with the whole body percussion thing particularly i think because it is so accessible and and i guess also when when you know when especially kind of when we go internationally there can be all sorts of rhythms we haven't heard before that can kind of come into play and uh, you know, it becomes very much a kind of a collaborative thing with us and whoever we happen to be working with. So, uh, you know, it's it's um, it's a it's a it's a it's a lovely platform to kind of connect with people. Um, and, you know, it's kind of often referred to as this kind of universal language of rhythm. But that takes many, many different dialects. Um, so it's it's yeah, it's 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 a fun job to do. What can I say? Um, and how are you finding, I mean, there's lots of talk in the press and, and anecdotally about, you know, the lack of um, money available to schools and that kind of thing. So how are you finding it in terms of people's of um, availability to instruments? Obviously, that, that that's, that's where the body percussion thing is so brilliant. But it, but in, in terms of sort of having access to things as they want to expand out from that initial um, contact that they have with you, is, is, are you sort of finding that what people are saying is true in terms of there's less and less and less but are you finding that people actually with the right mindset and the right creativity of uh, are giving what they really want to give i think it's there's a, probably lots of different answers that i mean there's, there's i mean there's no two ways about it education funding is being cut um unfortunately and there could be i'm sure there's whole kind of things on that from our kind of own specific point of view because we do lots of one-offs um if if we're you know there's there can often be kind of uh, pots of money found for a kind of a one-off in the summer term for example um the body percussion and literacy th- t- it has been funded by has been funded by literacy budgets rather than music budgets um which there tend to be vastly more of but then if you've got kind of creative thinking heads, then you then they realise that there's a combination there, and the music can and can uh, benefit from it. The junk percussion is also obviously a nice one because the resources are you know very much you know recycled and uh, you kind of and there's also a kind of a bit of a science link there um with kind of the, the way that different materials sound and that side of things so but i mean there's no two ways about it i mean we have had lots of people saying we simply haven't got that money anymore um which is a real shame and we're always as kind of flexible as we can be in terms of kind of adjusting um, and kind of working with schools to try and make things happen. We've also got lots and lots of free resources from our website that people can download and we're going to be adding more as we go along. And so it's stuff that people can kind of try and use and implement. And we have uh, a new videos page uh, which can, uh, from, the, from the website, which is going to be updated regularly, which has uh, kind of ideas for people to try out themselves. So we're always trying to kind of basically offer as much as we can for free and then kind of be as flexible as we can elsewhere. But, yeah, you know, it, it's a full time job for me. We've got a team of facilitators who kind of uh, who, who are kind of pretty busy. So, um, yeah, it, it, we do make it work. But I think there's there has to be some quite creative approaches to finance, financial side of things, even more so than ever, I think. Yeah. And, and just give us all the details in terms of the social and the website and all that. So people can can go and find out exactly all those videos and things that they can they can see more of. So everything's available via uh, beatgoeson.co.uk and via our social media, which is beatgoesonuk. Fantastic. And I will see you again at the Music and Drama Expo, whether that's uh, back in London or whether we go up to Manchester and that as well. It's always great to wander around and, and have a chat to people. And um, our very brief conversation will be part of my uh, Music and Drama podcast that I did where I went around and chatted to quite a few of the facilitators. Um, and, and so that's going to be coming out soon as well. So it'd be exciting to, to hear all of those different things that were going on on that day. Absolutely. There was a lot going on. It's it's, it's always a kind of a fun event to be part of. Great. Keep us up to date. Let us know what's going on and um, and then we can uh, find out how all this progresses. And it sounds like there's a there's a lot happening, but there's also a lot in in the planning as well. So it'll be great to see how that develops. Great stuff. Lovely. Great to chat to you. Nice one. Cheers, Mark.
Do you need help and support in creating and embedding music in your school? If so, we have created Primary Music on Fire to help you with just this, a music membership site that's taking the fear out of teaching music by giving you the step-by-step skills and ongoing support you need to produce lifelong musical memories for you, your school, and your pupils. Go to educationonfire.com forward slash primary hyphen music. Thanks for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information of each episode and to get in touch, go to educationonfire.com. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.